Would you go to space if you had a chance? Would you still do it if the spacecraft was an air balloon? I'm talking a really big one. What kind of training would you need to complete before you went up there? How high into the atmosphere would you get? And what are the chances of getting whisked into space? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you rode a balloon to space. Ever tried breathing in a lung full of helium? Helium makes the sound waves that your vocal cords produce travel three times faster than normal. And that makes you sound like a Pixar character. We represent uh... Helium also makes air balloons float up in the air. It's kind of a big deal because of how rare and non-renewable this gas is. That's why the air balloon that would take you to space wouldn't be filled with helium. It would be fueled by another gas with a similar effect, hydrogen. And it would be the experience of a lifetime. In essence, what we do is take a capsule up with a balloon big enough to float on top of the Earth's atmosphere and then float there for a few hours and then gently float back down uh, and splash down uh, in the ocean and get picked up uh, uh, just like, uh, like the SpaceX capsule does. Okay, wait, I didn't know you could get to space so easily, but that's the concept that's being developed by a company called Space Perspective. And we've got their founder and co-CEO, Tabor McCallum, on the line. So Space Perspective is developing Spaceship Neptune, which will take eight people and a pilot to sort of the, essentially the edge of space, about 30 kilometers or 20 miles up, using a huge balloon the size of a football stadium. I don't know about you, but I'm sold. If you've always dreamed of seeing the North Pole, this might be your chance to take a cruise above it. Or maybe you've always wanted to look at clouds from high above. Take a good long look. Maybe you'll see the world's number one cloud business system. Hey everyone, I'm Peter and this is Richard and we're on the set of our What If Discussed podcast because we want to bring you a message from our friends at NetSuite.com. Yeah, if you're a business owner, it doesn't matter what type of business necessarily. I mean, you could be, could be flying people to the stratosphere in a balloon. A balloon to the stratosphere. That's a business. Uh, we're not going to tell you how to run your business because we're not business experts. No this idea. isn't a business show. Mm. But what we can tell you is you might be making it harder on yourself than it needs to be. Yeah, that's right. So don't let QuickBooks and spreadsheets slow you down anymore. It's time to upgrade to NetSuite. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the information you need when you need it. Like Pete said, it's 2021. Get rid of the old spreadsheets. Get rid of the old school, outdated software. Right. Upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. It's the world's number one cloud business system. Yeah, NetSuite gives you control and visibility over your financials, your HR, your inventory, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need all in one place, instantaneously. Whether you're doing a million dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. Yeah, and it's tried and true. It's not sort of out of the blue. There's already 20,000 people on the NetSuite cloud, so you won't be alone. Yeah, it's not brand new. It's been around for a long time. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash what if. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash what if. That's netsuite.com slash what if. All right, let's get back to our balloon adventure. Before stepping into this craft, you'd want to know all the ins and outs. And we're about to tell you how this would play out. Three hours before the flight, you'd arrive at the launch site and get a training session with your instructor. So what, no excruciating workouts prior to the launch? Not even a diet change? Nothing? There's very few physical requirements. Uh, there may be an age limit for minors, um, but we haven't found a practical upper age limit. Uh, we had some questions about an 86-year-old woman a little while ago, and uh, our, our doctor said she's good to go. 
Uh, so if you can do a commercial airline flight, you can do this. Phew, that's some good news from Mr. McCallum. That's a level of preparedness I could handle. And while you're walking around in excitement, the launch team would take their positions and perform the final checks. The launch team would unfold a giant deflated balloon on a protective mat. I know it would be hard to resist, but try not to touch the balloon just to see how it feels. You don't want to accidentally scratch it. The crew would initiate inflation. They'd be pumping in one ton of hydrogen gas into the balloon. This would take a while. Finally, you'd step into the pressurized cabin of the spaceship Neptune, and the 200-meter-tall balloon would lift off. When you fly a rocket to orbit, then you're going so fast that you essentially keep missing the Earth. You're always sort of flying around the Earth. If you go up on a Virgin rocket or a, a Blue Origin rocket, you go up and then sort of parabolically fall back down. And what we do is we go up and then sort of float there slowly and then gently come back down. So a big part of that experience is actually the slow ascent and slow descent. So when you, when you talk to a, like a pilot or even an astronaut, you know, the, the, the getting into orbit part or the getting into space part is so fast, you don't really have time to understand, sort of mentally grasp what's going on. But we take two hours to get up there. We're going at 12 miles an hour. So this, this is like bicycling speed to the edge of space. You wouldn't be alone on this oversized hydrogen-filled balloon. You'd share the cabin with a pilot and seven other passengers. And you'd be riding in luxury. The cabin would feature huge windows, comfortable seats, a bathroom, and of course, a bar. It could be the perfect romantic getaway with a great view. At 19 kilometers an hour, some two hours later, the balloon would take you to the altitude of 30 kilometers above the Earth's surface. You'd cruise around for the next couple of hours, take in the sights from the stratosphere. It would look gorgeous up there, but that's not exactly going to space, is it? Stratospheric balloons, like the one carrying you aboard the spaceship Neptune, can only reach altitudes of up to 50 kilometers. That's only halfway to the point where, technically, space starts. The way buoyancy works is that um, the atmospheric pressure on the surface of the Earth is higher than the atmospheric pressure a foot above it which is higher than the atmospheric pressure a foot above it. And so as you go higher, the atmospheric pressure gets lower. If you make a balloon and you, and you make that volume less dense than the atmospheric pressure around it, that says, so we do that by filling it with helium or hydrogen. Essentially what's happening is the, the atmospheric pressure at the bottom of the balloon is pushing it up because it's less than the atmospheric pressure at the top of the balloon. But this big balloon could only get so high before it becomes heavier than air. And its buoyancy wouldn't be enough to push it up any higher. That limit would be somewhere around this mark, where it's too high for commercial airplanes, but way too low for rockets and satellites. It might not be outer space yet, but it would be high enough to see the Earth's magnificent curvature in all its beauty. After a few hours of enjoying the view, you'd start to descend back to Earth. Your pilot would begin slowly releasing the hydrogen. After two more hours, the crew would deploy a parachute and safely splash down into the ocean. Shortly after the landing, a ship would pick you up. Oh, and that would cost you $125,000. The market demand looks so huge that I think we're going to be operationally limited for all space companies together. But uh, we are looking at ways to bring that price down over time. I think, you know, certainly getting to half that price in time is possible. 
And then it's becoming sort of a lifestyle change question for a lot of people. You know, do I get that new car, that bigger house, or do I decide to go? If you were determined to ride a balloon all the way into space, you could bring jet fuel, hijack the spaceship Neptune, and use rockets to launch the balloon from the stratosphere all the way up to space. Well, you wouldn't make it very far into outer space. It's not that easy to break free of Earth's gravity and leave the Earth's orbit, so no danger of that happening, but if your rocket suddenly malfunctioned, you'd be toast. You know, there are other ways you could travel into space without jumping into a rocket, but that's a story for another What If.